first single. Beneath the lights, the steeds, the mayhem, and some ads and cool seduction. Everything's impossible. And everything's so easy. Vision of invented knees between the carrot and the stick. They fix you with their beastly eyes and a smile. Sweet soul, and if they never let you go, now is your love as strong enough as like a breeze, as sweet as all of these things you could be forgiven. Tattooed on score, sad eyed dreamers bound for elsewhere. Love is clean like the theater style. Myth and sham, believe, believe your tears will end. You've got to feel this love, you've got to feel this love. Please, and if they darken your sweet soul. Sweet our eyes, all of these things You could be forgiven Sweet soul, and if they never let you go, and if they darken your sweet soul, and if they never let you go, is your love is strong enough, is like a breeze, is sweet oil, is all of these things you could be forgiven. Is your love is strong enough? Like the breeze, sweet our wild These things You could be forgiven You could be forgiven You could, you could be forgiven You could, you could be now You could be now oh, 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 These, all of these Sweet, sweet things oh, Hi. <laughs> uh, those in Facebook couldn't see me, but I was dancing away here. How, yeah, how, I've never seen you like that. Great. <laughs> how's it? How's it? Are you getting used to these Zoom uh, songs and stuff? That was fantastic. Oh, thank you. Um, first single, 1988, I think. This is the 30th anniversary. It's over that for that single, but 30th anniversary of the album. I've done a few of these chats, but you're still learning as you go, um, technically. I mean, just even about half an hour, an hour before then, this doing this Zoom, I discovered a couple of different things that improved it 100%, actually. So I'll be sharing that with everyone else. It's a, it's a very clunky, not very... Um, user friendly thing, you know, to do things in, from a distance. It's really not friendly at all. But I'm getting used to it. I'm, I'm doing more and more as time goes on, but it's not something you can make an income from. This is the thing. I, I wouldn't feel comfortable charging people for doing this, really. You'd be pleased to hear. 
I don't know. I would pay. I, I would pay to watch that. To be very honest with you, you're <laughs> actually going to be performing. I'll just give a little plug uh, oh, for yeah. Pride, July the 11th. So, for those of you watching that want to see more falls, uh, come along then. So, uh, we, it, it's a difficult time for everybody, but I think we're all kind of getting together to try and make it uh, work for the community because you know, obviously, at this time of the year, there'd be so many prides. I know you had a a tour you were going to be doing a tour weren't you well um i've had to cancel like a couple of different flying solo tours but the full uk tour for the anniversary it's the anniversary this week of the album um and at the end of the year october november december we had a full uk tour booked it is booked it's on sale so go in and buy tickets folks because if we don't get to do it I've rescheduled shows March, April, May, June next year. So, you know, there is an alternative. But for the venues, it would be great if people would buy their tickets now. It means just once you've bought them, they're sitting on ice ready for you to go and see the shows. And it's the same for everybody. It's not, it's not an unusual situation. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's what everyone's doing, in short. It's what we have to do, really. Yeah, so. yeah. No, it's, uh, it's kind of a... A new normal if you like i've got some questions coming in that i'm just gonna look uh -oh. at um, <laughs> um there's this one uh i don't know if you want to answer it it's a little bit personal okay uh, susan asked me um i know you suffer from asthma mm -hmm. uh, but do you wear any fragrances um <laughs> that don't know the relation to that question but i know <laughs> I'm just no, gonna I, ask I, I, you. Well, I know that things like that do affect my asthma, but I smell fantastic right now, folks. <laughs> before I go on stage or before I go and meet people, I always give myself a wee scoosh. I mean, years ago, when maybe you and I were growing up, Linda, we would put on the old Calvin Klein number one, or we'd put on Issey Miyake or these sort of standard smells. But maybe about 15 years ago or something, somebody gave me a present of Joe Malone. And I've never looked back. Um... So I think I started with lime, basil, mandarin, then pomegranate noir, and now I've sort of developed into woody, spicy flavours or smells rather, or aromas. <laughs> I love it. But do you know what? I haven't been able to get a hold of my um, Jo Malone recently. Um, so in Tesco, <laughs> a fierce wee plug, I found um, a couple of very similar um, smells, and they were like three fifty, and I was like, fantastic. So there you go. There's a wee tip for you. If you can't get Jo Malone, second best, Tesco. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's actually really good to know because uh, one thing that we all need to do is save a few quid during lockdown. That's what I'm learning from it. Well, well that's it. I, I mean, the other thing is I'm noticing your hair and I think your hair looks great like that. I really do. I think it looks good. Um, mine is at the end of its height <laughs> and I've snipped as much as I dare from around the sides. My hairdresser would kill me if she knew. I hope she's not listening. Um, I'm really, I'm starting to get wings at the back, so, but again, everybody's the same. I wouldn't go for the short thing, doesn't suit me. I did it years ago and I, I wouldn't do it again because it just didn't suit me, you know. Life is tough, isn't it? It's hard, it's hard. I'm just going to uh, call that another question here. Loads yep. of stuff coming in about how great you sound. Uh, I'm sure you're used to hearing yep. that, but uh, it's great Thank to know you. that the sound has been coming through really well. Good. Um, Oh, somebody lost my grey hair. Sorry, I'll just... Uh... Just you jump in there, Linda. <laughs> it doesn't, might honestly, just keep, looks great. Looks I, fine. Might just keep, I might just keep that. Somebody's... Um, uh, let me just give me a second. Uh, okay, what's your favourite thing to wear, Hall? So I'm going to keep these questions coming. I hope I'm not going to put no you... No worries, not at all. Just Fair say no comment. <laughs> um... I'm, I'm pretty boring, really. I do like a suit. I always have done. And to begin with, years ago, I used to probably, round about this time, I used to hide behind a suit because, again, we'd be talking a little bit politically. Um, I, record labels in those days, they wanted people to fit in boxes. And female singer, um, you know, I did not fit that stereotype. Um, lesbian, one of the only ones around. Uh, in fact, Martin Aston did a book called Breaking Down the Walls of Heartache about the history of music, um, people who are gay in the music industry. And it goes back two centuries. And um, I'm in there and we think that I'm the first person to sign a major record deal when the record company knew that I was gay or I was a lesbian. 
Um, but as to what to do with me, <laughs> there was no, they didn't know what the heck to do with me, you know, so, and I didn't either, Linda, because I was, I, I, you know, I didn't want to be identified as a girly girl. Um, and there was, it was ill-fitting suits. I mean, now, you know, I mean, the choice of what to wear and to be supported through, you know, putting records out would have been very, very different. Um, but there's always got to be a first time and, and things to change beyond that. But I felt very comfortable in a suit. Um, and if I could have changed anything, I would have had better suits, <laughs> you know, rather than things that were flung together and didn't fit me properly or whatever so yeah favorite thing to wear i think is a suit i feel very comfortable in a suit and i used to wear black all the time uh, but recently i've been wearing blue suits or you know red one i've got a, yeah so just i'm branching out a little bit <laughs> but um generally when i go to perform i feel like i'm i'm going to work i don't mean that in a kind of non-creative way i feel like i'm putting my uniform on to go to work and i would never be casual on a stage because it's too important to me to be just casual so i think that's probably it but you know yeah as i'm getting older maybe i think f better fitted suits are, are the idea or the or the way to go really yeah, well, one, one thing for me that I wanted to say to you tonight, and you probably don't remember this, but I remember seeing you when I was uh, young. You were very young then as well, obviously. Thanks, I'm and glad you added <laughs> that. We <laughs> think at the end. <laughs> but, uh, I, you know, I was in Brighton. I think you played Brighton Pride, and I remember you kind of just walking past me, and I was just like, you're just so iconic, because for me seeing a butch lesbian and i hope you don't mind if i say butch, not at all no uh, also i felt i felt you know and me being a butch lesbian myself there are so many few um you know women with a butch image that are out there proud and butch you know and it really meant a lot to so many of us and even the comments coming in now it's mm -hmm. like you know we just don't see enough of ourselves out there in the mainstream mm -hmm. as well I think it's a really important point and if it wasn't me it would have been someone else doing that thing because it had to happen because there are people like us everywhere um, and um, the difficult thing for some of us is that because there was no one else around um, um, it was hard, it was difficult. I, I made a reply, I don't want to go too political but we had horrible scenes in the centre of Glasgow, yeah, it, yeah, it was yesterday wasn't it? And. Um, uh, some a young man described what happened to him, and he's he's of Asian or Chinese um, uh, inheritance, and um, they were calling him all sorts of horrific stuff, and he was attacked, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And he wrote all about the whole thing of what had happened. And I replied, and I said, you know, I may not have the same skin colour, but I remember that fear. I remember being spat at, chased, attacked, and that never leaves you. It never leaves you. So I identify with that. I may not have the same skin colour, but I identify with that. And you become hyper vigilant um, and it just never goes, never goes away. And I said, I'm sorry this happened to you and I'm really sad it happened in my city. Um, because he said that, that in 10 years of living in Glasgow, he'd um, never had as much, in, in, the te in, in 10 minutes, he'd never had that amount of abuse in the 10 years that he lived in Glasgow. It's, it's horrific. But we can have empathy with people because we've been in situations where we've not been safe, you know. So um, I can't remember how I managed to wander off topic a little bit, but I had, I could, uh, you know the phrase I use, Linda? I can never not be myself. I could never hide, I could never not be myself because, as you say, I'm a butch lesbian and I pretty much am a statement, a walking statement. And I had to um, stand up and get on with it because I wanted to sing. Singing saved my life. So um, there was nothing else, no other path I could take. It would have been fantastic if the record company had been uh, a bit more astute, a bit more wise. I think the situation could have been handled better. And without being cynical commercially, I could have been dynamite, frankly. Ooh. You know? Yeah, but no. then give it another another year, uh, two years, um, and then there was KD, you know, and um, um, what an amazing 
icon and the stuff she suffered as well was way beyond. If I thought things were bad for me, I can't imagine what she suffered. Um, so, yeah, as I say, and then it goes on and then there are more people. There are more different shapes and sizes and styles and people start to get used to it a little bit. And now, of course, for our trans brothers and sisters, it feels a little bit of a similar kind of situation, you know, of being attacked for who, for who you are. So, again, I've got great empathy um, there as well. So... How did I go into that? It started with what I wore. <laughs> well, no, we were talking about being a butch lesbian and uh, I was actually going to ask, so you, do you feel that, uh, you know, because obviously you've got this amazing, powerful voice and, uh, do, you know, do you feel like at that time the music industry was more about how you looked rather than how you sound? Um, I don't think that will ever change. That's always been how it is. Um, I mean, if you look at um, the Christine and the Queens, I mean, that's a really powerful young woman there, you know, um, and, there are, you know, so um, I think that's been a positive, you know, for her, a real positive to look the way she does. Um, I'm, I'm not sort of casting aspersions about <laughs> what her sexuality is or, or anything like that, but it's a very powerful and strong image. Um, uh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I also think it, it's not even just the sexuality. There's the gender issue as well. Um, and also, I, I feel a lot that, that um, the period of time that we were doing music, there was two women fronting the band. There was myself as the singer and songwriter and Angela as a, a, a songwriter and guitarist. And we weren't respected as musicians, never mind you know, any sexuality issues at all. Um, and um, I still feel we get missed out of stuff, uh, you know, up here um, with our peers, our fellow musicians, etc. We're not thought about. And yet the one thing, yeah, I can live with that, I guess. But the thing that bothers me is, like you said, the music was incredibly important for people, incredibly. In it. And so you can disrespect me, but you can't, I think you can't disrespect how important the music was for those people and you can't you know uh, do that because you're then dismissing them so I feel quite strongly about it and I, I'm probably going to keep singing until I drop down dead because it's good for me you know it, it's you know it's for me it's not about the money I get great joy from singing and when I hear stories from people and um and again, not just from the LGBT community, just across the board. The music means a lot to people and, and it's a real blessing to be able to do it. And I'll keep doing it if it's, it works for me and it works for the audience. It's fantastic. You, you can't actually see uh, the comments coming in. No. Come no. Out to you. you know, uh, one of them's really made me laugh. Somebody uh, said that your suits actually give her life. So... <laughs> My suits give her life. Yeah, so I think that's... Well, ask, her, ask her what she means, because that's really interesting. Uh, Faye, what do you mean by that? Maybe she'll... she'll... Oh, I love you. You're my pal. We go to a lot of these um, uh, Linda's events, and well, we often end up standing, you know, to, you know having a wee... Uh, hello, <laughs> how are you? Um, yeah, so... Oh, God, that's lovely. That lovely thing to say. Oh, you always cut a dash. I, I, I admire uh, your... Um, What's the word? There is a word. Your bespoke style. You always look cool. You know. So there you go. Um, uh, well, oh, I don't know if I can keep reading these. So she might. You might go to your head a bit. Your dynamite. Oh. <laughs> I love you. Um, I'm trying to find a comment for me, but I'm not finding one. <laughs> You're I'm funny. Um, what's your most? One comment is. Uh, what's your most memorable gig? Um. Oh God. These headphones are annoying me. Um, my most, I can't choose one. I definitely, I definitely can't, cho I can't choose one. Um, uh, everyone's different. Every situation is different and every gig's different. Um, in Glasgow, we have the Barras, the Barrowland, and I um, got the Scottish Chamber Orchestra to go in there. And I performed with the, the Scottish Chamber Orchestra and that was a thrill of a lifetime. Firstly, that they even agreed to perform with me. But the experience of playing your songs with an orchestra was unbelievable. Um, so that was incredibly memorable. I recorded it and, it and it's an album now, which is great, called Both Sides. Um, 
first time I played in LA at the Troubadour. It's a famous, famous venue uh, in LA, and to get to play in an iconic venue like that, that was just unbelievable. Troubadour. We played likewise. We played at CBGB's Gallery in New York, which was great. Um, I did. Uh, in, in Germany, they call their prides CSD, which is Christopher Street Day, because obviously that's where Stonewall is. And so they have CSD, and I've, I've played quite a lot of um, CSDs in Germany. And uh, last time I was in Munich, I had the honour of um, singing at the AIDS Memorial. And um, it's very memorable because I'm in the Heumarkt, and I was playing to over 20,000 people singing, and I sang Bring Him Home. And it was, there was silence while I sang this. And I found it very hard to sing because it was in, in memory of people who had died of AIDS. And it was just incredible, absolutely incredible. Um, so yeah, definitely that, that in Munich was, was fantastic as well. Opening for Tina Turner across Europe it was just pretty mind blowing. Um, but I can even think back to little gigs I played, you know, tiny so spit and sawdust places where the people were so close to me they were switching my echo unit on and off and um, I think I learned my trade um, playing in little places like that so it's a, I suppose they're bittersweet memories you know that was a bit rough um, but if you could deal with an audience in that situation you could deal you know with any venue or talk to anyone that's a few <laughs> Um, I, I was actually going to ask you about Tina Turner. Uh, have you got any, because obviously this is just going to a uh, diva community, have you got any hot gossip? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's one of my, it's one of my famous stories, like, well, you, Linda, I think you're like me, if, if you don't mind me saying, you're like me. You see someone and you go, oh, gosh, I'd like to meet that person. I'm going to go and meet that person. And generally you do, Linda. However, me... And we, I don't know how many shows we did. We played across Germany and Holland. We played at Wembley Arena, um, you know, so we played all over with her. And do you know what? <laughs> like, oh, maybe six months we were in the States. George, Angela and I were in the States doing interviews. And um, <laughs> a, a journalist, a DJ said, hey, you guys, you get to meet Tina? And I was like, I was just about to go, no. And the two of them went, ah, yeah. I went, what? <laughs> I spent all my time, picture me all excited, I must try and meet Tina. Um, I wandered around the corridors, I never ever met her once, never once. And they said, oh, she came into the dressing room a couple of times. And I was like, what? And I think the times that she came in to say hello, I was looking for her. Um, we were um, with EMI and her boyfriend, now husband, Urf, um, was head of the label in Germany and that's how we got to do the show. Um, so I knew him better than, <laughs> than I knew Tina. Um, met B.B. King, which was phenomenal. Um, he came and shared some wine with us and some stories, some tall tales, a really nice man. Um, who else have I gone for? Burt Bacharach. As a songwriter, meeting Burt Bacharach was just unbelievable. And also with the information that he had to endorse or approve who opened for him. And um, the uh, tour manager was playing me somewhere in the background. And he went, who's that? And she said, oh, that's horse. Um, she might be opening for you. Oh, yeah, it's great. I really like that. And I was like, oh, Burt Bacharach said yes. <laughs> so really exciting that somebody like that, that you really admire as a writer, just to, to even know you were in the same room is just incredible. <laughs> <coughs> um, and trying to think. Uh, anyone may, I've, I've opened for the Indigo Girls. I've sung with the Indigo Girls at Queen's Hall in, in Edinburgh and they were lovely people, very nice. Um, trying to think, n name any sort of people have I met? Um, trying to think. Uh, I opened for Martha Wainwright. I absolutely loved that. Um, she was quite a cracker. Who else? God, I've, I've, you know, over the years I have sort of met quite a few different people, but um, yeah. I could, I could, you, this is me gassing Linda as usual, so just stop me, stop me, because I could keep going. Well, I'm going to ask you a lockdown question now. Um, okay. Uh, well, this one, <laughs> it's this a secret a bit, one. This one's a little bit intense. I don't know nothing about it because I, I, I don't, as you know, know anything about music and how it's even produced. So, yeah. you know, somebody's asking, do you think lockdown will produce better music? as it's given people more time and space to think, has it given you inspiration? 
Um, if I'm honest, no, absolutely not. Um, I think I look after myself and when everything fell apart, I had to try and put it back together again myself. I'm still trying to put venues, etc., together. Um, and in my head, I feel like um, once that's totally out there, I mean, the shows are all on sale now. I just need to actually make a statement about it. Um, I'll maybe mention them before I go. Um, I am one of those writers. I don't write to order. I write when the muse takes me and I've been stressed out of my head. I've, I've had some very dark days. And actually, I don't mind sharing that because it's reality and I'm not the only one. I'm on my own all the time. I have been for many, many weeks. Um, and it's been quite a dark and, and difficult time. And then other times I've been okay. I've only met two or three people in that last sort of 10 weeks or so. Um, one of my neighbours died in that period of time. It's been quite a difficult, difficult time. Um, so I haven't actually felt relaxed or able to just sit and pick up my guitar. And I keep promising myself that, um, you know, once in the next sort of week or so, once these shows are totally out there, I can just let go of the reins, so to speak, <laughs> um, and start playing my guitar. I'm also still supposed to be writing my autobiography, but lots of stuff got in the way. Um, so it's time to, yes, to do it now. So in actual fact, I haven't been creative, but I will be, definitely. Okay, we've got a, a few more questions coming. I've actually got a comment about me. It's saying that my hair looks nice and have I mod modelled it on your style hall. So I don't know <laughs> you me. But the same person, Anne Miller, Anne Miller McCaffrey, I don't know if you've heard of her. I don't know, she's, I don't know who that is at all. I couldn't yeah. tell you who that is. <laughs> never heard of her, but she's asking lots of questions. Uh -oh. she's, asked, she's asked, uh I'll, I'll ask them both at the same time. Uh, okay. where, where, would you, where would you love to perform? And uh, do you have any plans to release some new music? Um, gosh, I think because I've played at the Albert Hall, show off as part of the Stonewall shows in the 90s um, um, and actually been at the Albert Hall it's not such a big ambition although I would do it in my own right rather than part of a bigger show um, do you know I don't think there's anywhere I, that I haven't already played that I wouldn't like to play to be honest um, any new music uh, well actually I'm um, this month I was due to be going in and re-recording Careful. So no, it's not strictly speaking new, as in the new song. It's it's um, a fresh recording, which means I own it, because one of the issues as an artist is that the record companies tend to own it. And I want to put it out um, before the tour, October, November. Um, so I was due to be in the studio doing that with the, the girls, uh, the string players. So, um, and I'm also due to start making the next album. So in actual fact, it is time to be creative. Um, so once I get rid of the strife of being trapped <laughs> in my house on my own, um, then you know I will I will get underway. And I can't I actually can't wait because once you start on that, it's like a, a roller coaster, and it's it's it, to not be able to sing, to not be able to be creative is actually you feel like you're trapped or you're stuck. And, and you you know my play careful. Um, it's all about trying to find your voice. So you feel like you've had your voice and then you're silenced again. Um, so uh, hopefully I'll be able to start, you know, getting on with it again. Yeah, I was actually going to ask you about Careful because I actually um, saw that in um, Edinburgh. Was it? Yeah. Edinburgh, I mean, so many journeys I've made, but um, mm -hmm. it was absolutely fantastic. It was so emotional. Um, it's really... Uh, self autobiography uh, and um, I was wondering uh, is that going to be touring you know I know obviously not during lockdown but are there more plans for it because it's, it's something that I so recommend people see I think that um, careful is a play for the t these times um, and I would like to do it again and funnily enough that there has been talk recently about it so a lot of technical things, as you know, and, and contractual things need to be sorted out, but I'd like to bring it down. It's not been down south yet. Um, so I'd like to do it. Uh, the thing that I find most gratifying about Careful was it wasn't about my sexuality. It wasn't about my gender. It was about someone trying to find their own voice. And I think that is precisely what all of us are trying to do at the moment. 
So I, although it's my story, it actually, if you see the play, it's, it's pretty much everybody's story, the struggle you have to find your voice. And um, yeah, I'd love to bring it, I'd love to take it down, down south and play, uh, let people see it because um, it's hard for me. I actually went and looked at some film of it. There's, some, there's film of it. Um, and I started to watch it and I couldn't get past the first scene. <laughs> Because, it, it, as you know, it's it, you know it was quite it is quite harrowing. There were things happened to me in my life as you know as I've grown up um, and and just life in general. There's kind of key things that happened to me are the sort of building blocks of the play. And uh, a bit like Hannah Gadsby, there's one shocking thing happens. There's a scene somewhere which which kind of shocks people but for me I think that was the sliding doors of my life sliding doors moment and made me perhaps who I am um, and I think people that came to see the play thought, thought that I would do like I'm doing now chat 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 oh and here's a song um, but I actually had to have coaching um, for acting and again hand in heart I had no respect for actors at all until I ended up doing this I mean, at one point, um, Maggie Kinloch, the director, lay across my feet and she said, stillness. And I was like, what? So I'm used to standing on stage and moving, but for acting, I had to stand still. And that was pretty scary. But I had to go through all those situations that I'd been through in my life um, to get through the play and, and to do it. Um, and it was harrowing, absolutely harrowing. And the thing about my life and your lifetime as well, so many things have happened in the last, last 50 to 60 years for the LGBT community. And my life seems to have gone along with that timeline. And um, so we, we encompass that in the play. And uh, so, yeah, I'd love to bring it down there, bring it all over the country and abroad. That'd be fantastic. You know, Michelle parted in saying she'll see it again because she must have seen it in, in Edinburgh. Um, Elizabeth Jennings is saying that the seven inch, what's the seven inch, seven inch, is that a record? Oh, careful, that's, <laughs> yeah, I think she's referring to vinyl, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She, she said it's a, she said it's a treasure in her collection. Um, okay. do, I, I don't know, we might, I recognise this name, but not quite, somebody called Samantha Ovens. Oh yes, doesn't she have a dog? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Samantha, Sam, Sam, that dog is beautiful, and the footage of the dog is just incredible. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. So anyway, sorry, I, 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 do, I digress. <laughs> I just sort of recognised the name, but yeah, uh, familiar. I'm sure, I've seen her eating the sweet on TV or something. On that, uh, <laughs> I love those actually, those sweets. Yeah, anyway, that's another story. <laughs> but she's asking. Sam Ovens. Hi Sam, by the way. Sorry, you know I'm only joking. Um, what yeah. personal experiences compel you to write more? Just when I think I'm getting over things, I feel that I haven't really got over things. And the one thing that I have is the osmosis of all of the pain and the hurt or even happiness comes out through my singing. And all of us are the same, I think. Um, so uh, there's a lot more of that and there always will be. It's my way of um, getting rid of stuff, um, singing or writing. So I feel very fortunate and blessed that I can actually do that. So that will continue. I've got lots more to give. Uh, because the other thing is, I don't know if you're the same. Um, Sam's perhaps a wee bit younger, I don't know. Um, <laughs> But I'm, I'm, I'm finding that through my life, I've ticked all these isms or, you know, negative things, you know, um, female, um, gay. And now I've ticked this other box, age. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, not another bloody hurdle. And I'm kind of reminded of um, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. I don't know if you've read that book. Um, I was on a trip to the States and, and I read the entire book on the flight. Um, and I think it's a perfectly true um, idea that, you know, you think you, you deal with this massive thing, it takes you a long, long time to get, o to get to it, get over it, get through it. You get to the other side and you think everything's fine. And then blam, something else hits you. And I think life is like that. And we're armed with experiences that um, give us knowledge and understanding and the ability to move forward. 
And then this pandemic happens, and I think that's another massive thing that we don't really know how to deal with. As I say, I've, I'm shocked and surprised at how down um, I've been and how, how it's been affecting me. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, yeah, singing is, an anti is the antithesis of that. Singing is an antidote for me, so I definitely plan on doing a lot more. So Mel Sampson is asking... Um... Oh, Mel, hello! <laughs> Mel was a fellow singer performer. She's a cracking person. I'm, I'm glad you recognise her name because she's asking a question that I don't understand. So hopefully. You're... Oh, okay. Hope it's nothing too personal, Mel. Yeah, I, there's, there's obviously a personal joke. Maybe you can explain. She said, uh -huh. "You are so great at suggesting covers." Uh -huh. she, she's putting brackets boots. Mm -hmm. What's your favourite song to cover? So what does she mean before you? Well, are... Mel is a tremendous. Um, uh, 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 singer performer and I met her as the um, with the um, God it's going out of my head just about to say it, the L project we were part of the L project a couple of years ago and that's when I met her I met a lot of amazing women that um, did this and uh, I sort of loosely keep in touch as you do and time drifts away from you and you don't keep close contact but um, now I don't think she'd asked for suggestions but there's a brilliant Nancy Sinatra track called These Boots Were Made For Walking, which you probably know. And I said, you would do a great job of that because she's she's not really like light pop. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, yeah, everybody, Mel Sanson, check out um, uh, her version of These Boots Were Made For Walking. So, um, yeah, fantastic. And it was a perfect fit, Mel, I'm sure you agree. Uh, covers, hmm. Well, I've just done Bring Him Home, which was a surprising cover. Um, AJ suggested I do it because she loves musicals and I thought, oh God. Ooh. So everyone knows Bring Him Home from Les Mis. It's ordinarily sang by a man. But the 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 deep the deep um, uh, meanings in there are not to me about gender. Um, uh, you know, when I sing it, it, it's about, you know, take my life so that this person can live. And God, it's an incredible song. Um, so yeah, that was quite something, and it's very hard to sing. Um, I've done Close My Eyes and Count to Ten, the Dusty song. Um, Wichita Lineman's one of the most popular covers that I've done. Um, I'm trying to think. I've, I've, done, I've only done a handful of covers because um, I'm not going to do a cover unless I do it differently. I, I think when you do a cover, it has to be something that you make your own. So that when people hear it, they go, oh, wow, what's that? And who is that? That sounds familiar. Because if you're just going to do a carbon copy of something else, you know, then to me, it's a waste of time, really. Am I wrong? <laughs> no, no, I know. I totally agree. I've got an yeah. email question here. Um, and apparently, uh, and I didn't know this, so I'm, I'm a bit behind oh. the range. You've been watching lip service uh, during <laughs> lockdown. Um, no, I think I think that's from somebody called Sue. I think I think I saw that question. Yeah. She's been watching lip service. She, I think. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, she. I think she asked me, "Have I been watching it, or, or oh, did I watch I it?" You said you have been watching it. Sorry. No, I think uh, I think Sue had been watching it. Um, lip service. Now that's an interesting one, isn't it? Because it came along and everybody was like, "Gaga about it," and I'm one of these people not because it was, uh, you know, lesbian orientated or focused. Um, I thought it was kind of, <laughs> you know, be, being completely cynical, um, being completely cynical, it was based in sort of um, posh apartments in Glasgow. Um, and, and to me, it just didn't seem to make any sense. The kind of mix of people would never have ordinarily been there. I watched a few episodes. I thought it was great. But I have to say... Um, and because she, she says, who was your favourite? And I have to say that um, I hadn't seen Heather in any other things, but um, I thought she was fantastic in that. And she invited me to watch her on set. And I thought, she is freaking incredible. I thought she was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And, and I was just absolutely thrilled to be watching her jumping down staircases and running about as a cop. I thought she was fantastic. Um, so if I had to choose one, yeah, maybe... Maybe uh, it would have to be Heather, or I met Laura Fraser as well at that point, and I thought she, I think she's a great actress. So yeah, I've answered the question. <laughs> Is it wrong? <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. I have to say I'm one of the few lesbians that uh, 
I hope everyone's not watching tonight that hasn't watched lip service and that's because I remember when it came out my my kids were really young and they put it on at 11 o'clock at night uh -huh. and I was like I had twins obviously and I was like I'm yes. shocked you know what I mean so uh Maybe I'll get around to watching it. I didn't see myself in there. Does that sound terrible? I didn't see myself in there and I didn't recognise myself. Um, so I felt like kind of out of it a wee bit. Um, and um, I think I felt the same with... Um, God, it's gone out of my head. I must be tired. The American version with Leisha. The L word. The L word. I never really watched the L word because I didn't really see myself in there as well. I know that sounds terrible, I, yeah, but I don't know. I'm going to get letters now. <laughs> as they say on TV, oh, well, somebody's going to write letters in to me. I don't know if anyone else is like that. I just, I, did, I just didn't identify with it. But anyway, yes, in terms of lip service, I thought it was a wee bit farcical because of I live in Glasgow and we don't have that kind of set up at all, you know, loft apartments like that. Um, but I thought Heather was incredible. And uh, as I say, Laura Fraser as well. Fantastic. So um, here's one for you from Polly Shoot. Um, oh, yeah. This one is very, very deep, Paul, so you wait, wait for this. Um, <laughs> what would the horse of today say to the 19-year-old horse of yesterday? Um, <laughs> gosh, too many things, I think. Um, I think the overriding thing would be, excuse the pun there, <laughs> writing. Um, everything is going to be okay and you are more than enough. I think those are the key things for me because I've spent my entire life worrying about what everyone thinks about me. You might not think that, but that's been one of my overriding things all, all my life. But if I could say something to myself, yeah, you're actually all right you are okay and you will always be enough if you if, and i say to people when i meet them after shows um whatever you are be the best you that you can be i think that that's a nod to dr zeus as well but yeah definitely because if you do your best you know what else can you do and i also i also think um that um we have to um treat people the way we expect to be treated ourselves that's something I've I've learned over the years, you know, try and be kind. Well, that's uh, that's very deep, Paul. So I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> you don't need to say anything. See to my eyes. Uh, let, let, me ask, let me ask you if you have a. Uh, I've not heard this before, so um, this this you probably know about, but I've not seen it. Do you still have a lucky charm called a seahorse? Um. Yes. Here we go. <laughs> Da, 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 da. Why have I never noticed that? I don't know. I'll hold it against the black and then you'll be able to see it. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, it's, yeah. a, it's a starfish, actually. That's my starfish is my lucky thing. But the logo for the band is a seahorse. Okay. Well, and the idea behind that is um, being called horse. You know, journalists and, you know, would always kind of try and get horseisms in first past the, the post and stuff like that so when it came to doing the artwork for the first album the same sky um we tried very hard to think about what kind of imagery and logo types and we came up with a seahorse and th the thing about the seahorse is that um, the male gives birth to the babies um so it kind of mixed things up a little bit you know um uh yeah it was kind of like going like that <laughs> To people, <laughs> can I can I ask you about the name horse? Then you want to sort yeah. of explain for those who don't know, the very few who don't know. It's a funny. Th Do you know it's a really funny thing? I've been thinking about this a lot because a neighbour downstairs that I've has been here for years. I came into the garden. She goes, "I know what your real name is." And this is like a woman who's a bit older than me, and she's like, "I know what your real name is." And her family were all sitting there, and she was pleased as punch. So for anyone that doesn't know, my previous name was Sheena McDonald and nothing particularly wrong with it. There's, I think there's four or five people who are quite well known with that name. So maybe it was fortuitous that I changed it, but um, I hated it and I didn't want a very female name. I didn't. I didn't feel right. And because I was quite androgynous, um, if I was stopped by the police for any reason, 
um, and they asked for identification on my driving license. I had Dr. Horse McDonald <laughs> so that they couldn't tell what gender I was because people were always asking me. And funnily enough, um, Faye had said earlier that um, because you'd replied to her about, you know, being in bathrooms and, and, and people calling for security. That happened to me at college. I was actually sitting quite happily in, in a lecture and one of the bosses came in and said, yes, I'd like to address the class because um, apparently there was a young man in the, in the toilets today, but I think I know who that might be. <laughs> he looked across at me. Um, so some young women had complained about a man being in the bathroom. And uh, when I played gigs um, much earlier, um, I had some terrible situations. Um, at one point, I mean, people found me quite attractive, the, the androgyny or whatever. They didn't know what I was, but they found me quite attractive or quite um, compelling. And, and again, I wouldn't go to the toilet publicly unless we'd one in the dressing room because, you know, it, it caused all sorts of stress for me and possibly even people in the audience. But once I couldn't wait any longer and I had to go and I kind of sneaked off in the dark in this small venue in Glasgow, went into the toilet and um, <laughs> I was in there <coughs> and I heard a conversation. Oh my God, he's fucking amazing. I thought, oh, fancy the pants off him and stuff. And I'm going, oh my God, I think they're talking about me. <laughs> I thought I better just stay in here. And then, we had this scenario where a couple of women came in who knew me and said, oh, no, no, that's a woman. And they were determined to kind of, you know, no, 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 you are wrong. It's not a man, it's a woman. And I was like, just shut up. You should just have left it. So, of course, I came out and then these like three women got me up against the wall and they were going, what are you? What are you? And it was this huge psychological battle and I still wouldn't say anything. And, and my line was like, well, you decide whatever you want because, you know, uh, you know, I'm whoever I am and that, that's none of your business really, but you can decide what you want. And anyway, they, they harassed me and went on and on. And then most people had gone by this point and the woman who'd been the worst came up to me and sat beside me and she burst into tears. And she said, I'm so sorry that, that I did that. I'm really, really sorry. And I said, it's all right. And I ended up having a comforter. And I thought, people just, they are so set in their ways about what people should and shouldn't be. And there was me stuck in this position where I didn't want to declare anything. And in a strange way, people who determined to call me by my previous name, it's the equivalent of dead naming me because that was a teenager that I left behind 40 years ago. But they're determined and they think they're clever. There was a journalist recently, it was a real backhanded compliment talking about people who have been forgotten about or who get missed out. And there was myself and a few others. And it said, horse, whose real name is Sheena. Blah, blah, blah. And it goes all down, Sheena did this, Sheena did that. And I'm like, what? That's like saying, you know, um, uh, uh, Gordon, some, I remember about Sting. Blah, blah, blah. But Gordon did this and Gordon did that. And I'm thinking, is it because I'm, I'm a female? Is it because you don't like me being called horse? Anyway, I've never got, I've never discovered or found out why, but all I know is, is that it's, it's kind of the equivalent of dead naming. It's not what I want and it's not funny and it's not clever. And I, and I just kind of take a deep breath now and go, oh, well, my name, my name before was this, but now it's this. It's on my passport. It's on my birth certificate. Um, driving license. I am Horse McDonald. And as the play said, horse. Um, soft but strong. And that is me. And, and it's a perfect thing. Because after a while, you don't see an animal, you just hear horse, which is quite a soft, uh, soft name. Um, I've got loads of stories about that, Linda. I could tell you about the time um, Rita Rusk. Um, I met Rita Rusk, the, the hairdresser, on a programme um, once, and uh, she kept calling me Horst. I think she thought my name was Horst, as in the German name. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So I could go on and on about that, but I, I won't, obviously. Hopefully that answers the question. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, talking about the toilets, we were having a conversation on Facebook earlier for those that, that don't know, and yeah. somebody had mentioned stuff about uh, the toilets. And, you know, as you said, Horst, I, I, I've suffered throughout my life going into the toilets, and um, uh, people seem straight to me 
women really giving me bad looks or like asking me what I'm doing in here, calling me security. And it's, uh, it's a big reason why I get so angry when we're having the debate in the community about trans women in the toilets and, you know, and all the fear. And I'm like, I've suffered a life of people yeah. being scared of me uh, going into the bathroom. So why am I going to put that fear and that hate onto someone else in our community? And uh, it really, really does anger me. Anyway, I just wanted to say that a little bit. Um, yeah, yeah. It's just, uh, you, you know, you obviously, you must feel it, the fear of going into a bathroom and, 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 and not wanting to go because of the, the, the stress that, in, in public, the public bathrooms, you know? We would be on tour and, you know, we would be having to come from a show in London and, you know, make our way back up to um, Glasgow or, or north anyhow. And you'd have to stop into, you know, service stations, service areas, etc. And early doors, I wouldn't go at all. I would tell the van to pull over on the hard shoulder and I'd go into the trees because I just couldn't face it because it was just embarrassing. I felt embarrassed. I mean, ima imagine being embarrassed. It's ridiculous. So... Yeah, I, I don't think now anymore. As I'm older, I guess um, I'm, I'm, you, when you get older, you, your weight sort of drops in funny places. So I look a bit more pear shaped, and 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 I'm less upset by it now because I've just kind of passed it. It's been going on so many years now that I'm kind of past it. Just people do look, but I'm just like I look at them back and go wait. So, so horse, our time is nearly up. It's gone so fast, you know. Is it? So many more questions, but 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 I do, you know. You obviously uh, um, started the show with a song. Mm -hmm. um, I wondered if you could finish the show with a song. You'll right? have to ask me very nicely. I want what I want to do is tell people that are interested that um, um, some of the tour dates have gone across to next year, but I am my t my tickets are on sale for the thirtieth anniversary same sky show so i'll just go down the list cardiff glee birmingham glee uh, sterling mcroberts trades club hebden bridge capital lesbian capital of the uk um mac arts and gala shields memorial hall lanark comedia brighton uh old st pancras church in london i think is just about to go on sale glee nottingham stables milton Keynes, appropriately um uh, Inverness, I think, is going across to next year. Um, and I'm going to be doing Queen's Hall December the 5th. But if not, they'll move. But the tickets are on sale. Um, I'll tell you briefly, Careful is like my way. This is the song that people talk um, to me about. And Careful, as a songwriter, I think one of the hardest things to do is to say a lot in hardly any words. And this was a co-write with myself and Angela McAlinden. And I, I, I can't say any more. The song has just transcended everything for me. It, it speaks to people in ways that you can't sort of um, think with your head. It's more that comes with your heart. Um, I think it's, it's a gift. It's been a gift to me and I just pass it on. Anyway, I don't know if we're going to talk after or will I just sing and then we'll all say our goodbyes. Yeah, should we say that? Should we do that? It would be quite nice to you uh, ending on, on that. So I'll say thank you very yeah. much for the interview. Thank I've you very much for being such a good friend. One of my, yeah. one of my best uh, moments was seeing you winning an award two years ago at the Diva Awards. Oh. Remember that night? So uh, That know. to me was, because you do, as you get older, you get missed out. And that to me was an incredible moment in my life to be recognised by my peers. And because people don't realise what you've been through to get to where you are. And I know through what people have said to me that I've touched people and helped. And, and by being there, by simply being there, it's uh, supported people. And, and I just, just, I couldn't have asked for more than that. That's amazing. So I'll have to, this has gone to sleep. Hang on. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> so I want to dedicate this to anybody who um, is feeling on their own at the moment or missing someone because that's how I feel. Um, looking forward to playing live again. Thanks, Linda. Thanks, Diva. It's been fab. This is careful.
sunshine on your upturned face Everything falls into place Blue sky above, sand underfoot Every star I've seen you love Sunrise turns the low landscape More beauty than your breath can take Boats out to seagulls in the air Might look as if I didn't care Careful with me, careful with my heart Well keeps turning, my world falls apart When you're out of reach, baby When you're out of reach, baby Oh, eyes, no in between I've been both and I can't win If this love should suffer sudden death It won't be because I'm not myself I don't forget I depend upon The simple fact you turn my heart Over, 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 over Well, keeps turning, my world falls apart When you're out of reach, baby When you're out of reach, baby Careful with me, careful with my heart Well, keeps turning, my world falls apart When you're out of reach, baby When you're out of Don't forget, I depend upon the simple fact you turn my heart over, 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 over. Careful with me, careful with my heart. World keeps turning, my world falls apart. When you're out of reach, baby. When you're out. Sunshine on your upturned face Everything falls into place Blue sky above And everything falls into place I love, I love, I love your upturned face Sunshine on your upturned face Woo!